back together again. I'm so sorry that I left you. I didn't leave. We needed a day off, but here we are once again. This is our daily bread. It's Tuesday. Regal's daily inspiration, encouraged and inspired by God's holy word. Yes, it's written in my heart as well as my mind. We're here once again on behalf of Regal Ministries. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Brother R here with you once again, ready for another fulfilled week of connecting you, myself, to God's holy word. So we so we may be encouraged and inspired by the truth that's found within the pages of his love letter. Of scripture. Where within it, our lives will be shaken clean. Everything will be removed from our lives that should not be. And the weight that disables us from truly following him. Will slowly slowly be dislodged from our being and through faith we'll reach our destiny through faith we'll make our way and find our way and be led by God to reach where it is he inspires us to be which is the best place we could be arriving to our destiny with God by our side amen pray with me today father we pray for those who might be far away. We pray for those who might not be stable. Today, Lord, we pray for those who might be rocked by what they see outside as their reality. But let it be known that that is not their reality. If we consciously make a choice to commit to you and allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit, the change we desire, the strength we need, the vision necessary and the love that starts with you and is delivered to us that becomes our reality and when we look outside and we see what we see though at times it might be disturbing we know that you god are in full control and where it is we need to be in our part in the process of changing lives and pointing to you as the source of love. We know that if we continue to open our hearts and our ears to your whisper, that what you have written in your word about ourselves and our friends, for all of us will become our reality, which will be to be passionately in love with you. Thank you for the joy and the love that you've placed in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I encourage you guys to watch on Sundays. I really don't cross promote our programs here at Regal Ministries. But when you have time, watch our Sunday fellowship programs. We're with Sister Nikki as well as uh Regal Sunday Fellowship. For the most part, I do the Regal Sunday Fellowship, you know, a sermon, a message. Um, there's always something in it. I mean, even in our daily bread, don't get me wrong, but there's always something in it when people say they watch it and they communicate back. And I always encourage you guys, don't be afraid. It helps us. It helps me. Communicate back with us. Give us a shout out. Let us know what's going on, what's in your mind and what's in your heart. But watch Sunday Fellowship when you have time here at Regal because it will give you that one thing that might be necessary. Yes, here we encourage and we inspire you, but Sunday Fellowship is like the meat on the plate. It's the protein that we need as part of God's nourishment that will open up our hearts to a greater understanding of his word and our reality. I spoke last Sunday. I spoke last Sunday about the need for us to be guided out of spiritual blindness. I spoke about Bartimaeus. I sourced a scripture story Jesus uh, Jesus was entangled with, with Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, where Bartimaeus was blind. And he heard, he was told that this Jesus guy 
this Jesus guy was coming to town. But Bartimaeus knew that this guy, this reputation, this guy, this, this Yeshua, he had a reputation of, of healing, of, of changing, of repairing, of fixing. This guy was coming to town, and if he could just find his way to the Lord, he was confident that Jesus was the one that could fix his ailment. And he did. Bartimaeus, as I detailed on Sunday, go back and watch it. There were three things that he did. And I, I, I connected to us who are spiritually blind. People are spiritually blind today. That's one thing with our daily bread is you won't understand the scriptures if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. Think about that. That's spiritual blindness. So we model a pattern of three things that Bartimaeus did. The first that he did was call to Jesus. And when Jesus answered, Bartimaeus responded to Jesus to whatever he directed Bartimaeus to do. And the third thing is once he was healed, the moment he was healed as healing was en route to Bartimaeus, he followed him. Those three things. Luke carries the same story, minus Bartimaeus' name. In my opinion, the, the stories seem to line up. But there was one thing that Luke shares about that story that Mark didn't have. So today, our daily bread is the conclusion. I line it up the same. They call it the blind beggar. The blind beggar, here's Jesus is coming calls out to him when he is told that Jesus has arrived, calls out to him. Jesus directs him after he hears his call and tells him to come, come to me. The blind beggar comes to Jesus. So he responds to Jesus's directive. Jesus asks him, what do you want? I want to see, the blind beggar says. I want to see. And Jesus says, it will be done. Go, your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. Again, comparing what took place, what Mark recorded and Luke recorded is virtually the same, minus the name, of course, but the ending is what I want to emphasize today. So let's look at the ending. It is uh, Luke 18, verse 43. Here is Jesus's response to the blind beggar's request to have his vision restored. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Mark didn't have that last sentence in there, and I find that in our discussion today vitally important. When all the people saw it, when all the people saw it, they also praised God. We all have had experiences in our life, things that we should not have overcome, things where the odds were against us, things that we were virtually defeated. The doctor said, no, there's no chance you will not survive. The lawyer told us, the judge is going to rule against you. The jury is out. Be prepared to go for a long time where it seemed to be impossible for us to get that job, the job we really needed. When the IRS was coming and it was a guarantee that everything would be taken away. When the health of a loved one, the doctor said it was it was going to be dark. They were going to be in this state forever. There are so many different things that we were not supposed to overcome. But we did. And it's not somehow, some way. Let me be clear. It was Jesus. We overcame the things we should not have overcome because of Jesus. 
Bartimaeus, but in this scripture covered by Luke, it's the blind beggar. He wasn't promised to see again. And I, I covered the three things that he did or the three things that we ought to do when we find ourselves in that position. I mentioned being uh, spiritually blind, but it was funny because Bartimaeus or the blind beggar in this case, he was able to do these things that were necessary, but at the same time, he could not see. He called out to Jesus. He responded to Jesus and he followed Jesus. He took a step towards him, which brought forth the faith needed to overcome what many of us would see are the odds that are against this. Jesus is the odd breaker. He is the chain breaker. He is the only one that can change the things that are against this. But with that being said, let's conclude. When the blind beggar was able to see when for the first time he was able to look around and match faces and images with what he was able to hear and what he was able to see, what he did first was praise God. First thing he did was praise God. But note, what happened next? Those who were there those who witnessed, those who saw the impossible take place because they saw him praising God because he could see. They also praised God because they could see that he could see as well. Here is my point. There are miracles that are taking place in your life. There's a miracle every day that you wake up every morning. There's a miracle when you walk in your kid's room and they're breathing and they're smiling and they want something to eat. There's a miracle every day when you put the key in the ignition of your car. There's a miracle when you walk into the job that you complain about all the time. There's a miracle that you still have a husband that loves you. And there's a miracle that that beautiful wife that you don't deserve still waiting for you at home, despite the type of day you had. It's a miracle that you have a mother who calls you and checks on you to make sure that you're all right. It is a miracle that despite everything else that people in the world are going through, you are not. There are so many miracles around us. And many people ask why. The reason why miracles exist is so we can praise God. If you praise God about your miracles, about the things that you know happen to you, happen for you, understand that God allowed these great things to happen for your life to be metamorphosized so you can praise him, but he doesn't need our praise. You see the praise to him publicly opens the eyes of other people who quite possibly don't have their heart open to God. So when they see your life change, when they see how he has impacted your life and you stop and you give honor and praise to him. This invokes them to give him honor and praise as well. Your miracle, the miracle that was delivered specifically to you could also be meant to be a miracle for the person standing next to you. Praise God. Praise God for your miracles. Because by you praising God, it encourages the person next to you to praise God too. Don't be afraid to praise God for what he's done. Yes, it has changed your life. But your testimony and your worship and your praise 
will indeed change the lives of those around you. Today, I encourage you to praise God. Just praise God for what he's done. It's a lot more for those around you than for the one above. He knows who he is, but through you, they get to know who he is as well. Our daily bread, Monday through Friday, this week, Tuesday through Friday. Pardon me. I wanted a bed day. I was tired. I still love you guys, though. Here's your job. Share. Share the message. Let's encourage each other. Let's build each other up. As Paul tells us to do. Share the message. Doesn't take long. Send it to five friends. Let them be encouraged. Comment it and hit me back. Let me know what's going on in your mind. Let me know what you want to talk about. Here's the last thing. Read your Bible. God has something to say directly to you. And if you open your heart, your heart and your ears to listen, you would be surprised at what he might have to say. God bless you. And God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.